what began as an experiment to bring my 11-year-old daughter into my business has evolved into Our Young Creators, a podcast, a training center, and a movement dedicated to equipping kids with real-world marketable skills so that they can fund their own brighter futures. We're here to inspire you to turn consumption time on devices into creation time and use technology as a tool to bond and not bicker with your kids. Join us each week as we share the inner workings of our partnership and bring you stories from guests of all ages and from all walks of life on our quest to nurture and to celebrate our young creators. Are you a good storyteller? On today's episode, number 175 of Our Young Creators, the podcast, we're diving into how the stories we create may in fact be what's holding us back from achieving the greatness and the kind of impact we're meant to make in the world. Before we dive into storytelling, I want to say thank you for tuning in today, catching the live, the replay, or listening over on the podcast. My name is Young Pratt. I'm the chief dreamer, podcaster, and author right here at Our Young Creators. Here at OYC, we are on a mission to help people harness the power of technology to share their gifts and help families bond over time spent on devices by becoming creators and not just consumers. When I was young, I was a really good storyteller. In fact, one of the stories I wrote was chosen for inclusion in the Young Writers Festival publication in 1980-something. Most of the stories, though works of fiction, were never published, and I've been on a journey to rewrite some of these stories. Let me know in the comments below if any of these sound familiar. And if you are listening on the podcast, come on over to our website, Our Young Creators. This is episode 175, and you can comment right there and let me know if any of these stories sound familiar to you. Story number one. What I have to say isn't important, so I just won't speak up in class or in the community, even if I know the answer or have a solution. Story number two, I'm not smart enough because I only scored X on this certain test. Story number three, Because I don't have a degree in X, people won't listen to what I have to say. Story number four, I'm shy or I'm an introvert. And story number six is one that you can just fill in the blank. When we're growing up, we write these stories for ourselves based on our experiences, our relationships, and what we perceive to be failures according to our own internal set of standards. I wish I had learned that it's through making decisions that we learn and grow. I wish that I learned that mistakes were to be celebrated and not shunned. 
I wish that I had learned early in life that the thoughts and the opinions of others are none of my business. Their opinions are theirs and belong to them and not me. For years, I let these stories define me. The stories about my school grades, the stories about scores on standardized tests, the stories of what other people thought of me, or worse, what other people told me other people thought of me. I lived the story of a victim as a resident on Comparison Island. You know that place where you compare your successes to others and yours don't quite measure up? That's what I call Comparison Island. Today, I believe that each of us is exactly where we need to be. And we need to make mistakes in order to learn the lessons that will help us in the future. We all write stories throughout our lives. And the best part about being the author of these stories is that we can choose to rewrite and edit any of them at any time. When I review the series of choices I've made in my life thus far, I can absolutely identify the times when I let myself be defined by external factors and the times when I wasn't being true to myself or my gifts or my calling. Those were the times I can tell you with absolute certainty that I struggled both personally and professionally However, the silver lining here is that now that I've learned those lessons, I can use and apply them in my life now to help me move myself further down my path. The stories that I wrote for myself about how and why I was struggling, how I was blaming others, my lack of confidence, though I didn't, of course, see it at the time, led to some of the best decisions I've ever made. They led to me opening my brick and mortar performing arts school way back in 2001. They led me to my husband who I married and now have two beautiful kids with. They led me to the first iteration of the podcast, Raising Smart Kids. And then the second iteration, Raising Smart Kids 2.0. And of course, now the podcast is called Our Young Creators. It was the journey from the depths of my stories that led me to write my first book three years ago. The book is called Raising Superheroes, How to Unleash Your Child's Eight Superpowers and propel learning through the arts. The book is a guide to understanding, supporting, and encouraging our kiddos to embrace who they are and the gifts they have been given. It's a guide to help us as parents understand ourselves better so we can help our kids that much more and help them grow into the superheroes they're meant to be. It's also a guide that helps us have conversation with educators and administrators to advocate for our kids and really stand up for them in a meaningful way that's going to help contribute to their success, not the success of everyone in their class. Well, I hope that by me sharing my stories of these things that I've rewritten over the years and that I'm learning to rewrite so these stories don't sabotage me, but instead serve me. I hope that by sharing them, you're beginning to think about the stories you may have written in your life and the ones you want to write from here on out. Do you need to rewrite some of your stories so that they serve you? Are there chapters in your story that need to have additions made to them? Maybe they need a sequel. And what about your kids? 
Do your stories, do the stories that your kids are writing now, are they serving them or are they sabotaging them? How can you as a parent help your kids write stories that are going to serve them for years to come? If you're ready to embrace your gifts, share them with the world, all while bonding with your kids over the devices they're already using, I'd love to invite you to join us in round number three of Podcast in a Weekend. We kick off on Friday, November 16th at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's time, my friends, to rewrite your story and become that person you know deep down that you're meant to be. Let's celebrate your gifts, your talents, and those of your kiddos and share them with the world on a podcast. I'm going to leave the link below to save your seat in round number three of podcast in a weekend. And of course, if you have more questions about the class, if it's right for you, please reach out to me here on Facebook or even on Instagram and ask questions and let's have a chat about how we can maybe rewrite some of the stories you've told yourself to become the person you know that you're meant to be on this planet. I want to thank you for being here with me today and going into this journey all about storytelling. I'll be back again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with an interview with Callie Mettler-Smith, a round two podcast in a weekend graduate. You won't want to miss this episode to hear about what she is creating in the world especially if you or your kiddos has aspirations of becoming a writer. Okay, my friends, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Cheers, my friends. If you're ready to harness the power of technology and get your message out into the world in a big way to make the impact you know you're meant to make for yourself, for your business, or with your family, head over to bit.ly slash podcast in a weekend and save your seat in round number three, which kicks off on Friday, November 16th. Save your seat now for podcast in a weekend at bit.ly slash podcast in a weekend.